Hey, Matthew, how are you? Hey, Ari, how's it going, man? Greetings from Nashville. Yeah, greetings from Nashville, that's right. Up until now, all my guests on uh, this thing I started back in March of 2020, the beginning of COVID, I had a focus on just doing uh, local Canadian guys, mostly Ontario guys, that's where I'm from, like the, the Toronto area. But uh, now things have changed. We're not so much in isolation. Even here in Canada, where most of my guests are out there gigging and touring, so uh, which is good. We've got rules and capacity constraints and all that, but they're out there. So I thought I can change the rules. And I've known you for, I met you about 11 years ago at Robert's Western World in, in Nashville, where you're, you're still playing a lot, and we'll talk about that. And I've been following all your stuff, and over the years, you've helped me out uh, on a recording that I did. You gave me some great uh, solo ideas. So, And, you know, why I wanted to reach out to you to do this and have you on the show is because of this, and we're going to talk about that. I mean, Hal Leonard is a huge publisher. You know, we've all learned his stuff when we were kids and bought tons of their stuff, and you've been published. So... I want to get really into you as a guitar instructor and, uh, you know, and a performer and all that. So it, it's a thrill to have you on this, my first American guest. <laughs> all right, you're branching out. Welcome to the United States. It's still North America, though, so that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, um, well, I can also say that, you know, I, I kind of, as a, as a guitar player, I'm not big and famous. I don't have a ton of followers on um the social media and all the uh, analytics, if you will. Uh, but I've gained them one at a time. And knowing you for as long as you have, you've also been a big supporter of, of uh, me and uh, my tunes and my stuff that I'm doing. You've always kind of, we've always checked in with each other, literally periodically throughout the years. Well, I got and your hat on. I know. I appreciate oh, I, it. I just got it crooked too. Oh, oh, that, there you go. There you go. Well, that's you know that's what they <laughs> that's what the kids do nowadays. You know. Yeah, that's right. um, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's important to me because as you develop those relationships. You know, we, I would like to say we've been friends for quite a, a long time. We talk about music, we talk about life. Um, and, you know, life has been a little bit weird for a lot of us, um, you know, in the last year and a half. It's, you know, um, but yeah, I got, I got the book right here. And yeah. I can also say that as a fellow, as a Wisconsinite, um, Hal Leonard's corporation is based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So, kind of, you know, the backstory with that is I had, I went through a couple of different channels. And uh, as you can see behind me, you see that bookshelf? Yeah. 80% of that stuff is like all Hal Leonard books, you know, oh, like, right. uh, you know, I've got a, a bunch of them down here. I've got, you know, they're just everywhere. Um, <laughs> this is my music room slash library is like I um, like to consider it. And I've always been a big book guy because when you're, when you're a little bit older like me, we didn't have the interwebs. We didn't have uh, Zoom calls. We didn't have YouTube. We learned out of these things. Yeah, for and sure. And it was even yeah. pre before, you know, like CDs came out or not. Now what this, this has is a digital code that's links to two hours plus a video, two and a half. In fact, there was a certain point in the video shoot where they said, Matt, just shut up. We're done. <laughs> you know, like you, you've done enough. You know, you've talked enough about this. Save it for book two or whatever. Yeah. Quit yapping. But, um, yeah, it, it was a great experience. Unfortunately, last year kind of uh, shifted things a lot because these were licks and stuff and ideas and backing tracks that were written. My due date was February uh, 2020. Oh, so yeah. guess what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No video, no book, all of 2020. Um, and, and finally uh, did the video like in May this year. Yeah. And had a release date of NAM. And um, so I'm really proud of it. It's good to be a Wisconsin guy with a Wisconsin publisher. Not only that, the one of the biggest ones around. Um, and uh, it's a real honor. And it's cool because I've got friends asking me about it. And, you know, sometimes people just, I mean, it's it's in the, the, the thing that says tips and tricks. Well, a lot of people, a lot of guitar players, especially advanced people or intermediate, they're kind of just, they kind of know what's going on. They just kind of want to see how people think. And if anything, that's kind of what this book is, because it's good for beginners, intermediate and advanced. It starts out at the ground floor and, um, you know, without just yapping about it a bunch, it's just, that's the kind of way that I wanted to 
have my coming out party for at least being a, a published well, it's author. Great. I mean, it's it's not your first foray. We're going to get into that. I mean, you've got sure. two degrees in music and you've been on True Fire and, uh, you know, you've got another, uh, there's another educational series too. So you've got a ton of experience at, at teaching. And I'll, I'll just say like, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into this, but I'll just say, I spent a little time uh, once I received the book. I, I got a lot of work to do, <laughs> but it's it's just it's jammed like it, and it's dirt cheap, right? So you're you're, I mean it's it's I mean it says here. I mean I'm Canadian, so I paid like you know ten thousand dollars. But if you're American, it's like twenty bucks. You know, um, no, the Canadian dollar is not that bad. It wasn't ten thousand, but. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully I mean, not. you got like like a hundred licks. One hundred and thirteen to be exact. One hundred and thirteen. I was getting then, exhausted watching this. And then but, seven but you, solos. But it starts off. It starts off slow, you know. But there's tons for advanced players. There's tons for guys in the middle, and there's a good uh, there's good stuff for 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 beginners too. I mean, you touch on theory, which you have a lot of educational experience uh, to teach that. And, uh, but you don't go too heavy into it to that you just kind of, you know. I don't want to, I didn't want to lose people from the yeah, get go. Yeah, because you can get lost pretty quickly when guys get a little too heavy into theory. And then you can kind of bore people too much too if the theory goes on too long. Like we want to, we want to play something cool. And you want to apply use, it to something like, well, how, how does this, how is this you? Like what? Just for me personally, there's that which has been, really important for me is grasping some of this theory and how to apply it to create your own stuff and how to think musically. Now that's really critical, but where I think some guys kind of lose people's attention is you go a little too far there and you don't give them some fun stuff where this, your course has a lot of like fun licks. It's like, Ooh, yeah, I want to learn that. I want to learn that, you know? So it's, it's got a, it's got a bit of everything and a lot of it. So like you said, it's a couple hours of video. I mean, I don't know where are you going to get that for 20. Well, bucks? there's licks and there's <laughs> stuff like that. And then here's the number one thing as a first book that I release, if I didn't do the first 15 pages or whatever it is, I wouldn't be a very good teacher. You start, it's like building a house. You got to have a solid foundation. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's face it. There's 26 letters and the English alphabet. <laughs> there's 12 total notes. That's it. That's yeah, yeah. all the choices that you get. It's those combination of notes and knowing I'm going to grab my guitar here like, okay, and, and I see this a lot because I do a lot of teaching. And let's just keep it real basic. Eighth fret on the G string. What is that? Oh, it's an E flat. You know, like knowing that note and knowing all the chromaticism. And then you can get, I'm not a huge scale guy, but I include a lot of that stuff. But start with the basics and just kind of, it's like, what does a, a sports team say when they don't really play that well? Well, we got to get back to the fundamentals. Well, yeah. that's what it is. It's, yeah. it's starting out with that. And these are the components of the musical language. These are the elements. If you're going to want to be a mad scientist, you better know your basic chemistry. These are the elements. These are the building blocks that we start with. We have 12 building blocks. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you yeah. can play all the jazz chords and, and superimpose all the different things that you want. You have 12 possibilities. The thing is, is I, I don't know the math, but over each chord and progression and different feel, it's literally infinite. And, yeah. and it's yeah. not about just playing notes. It's about literally making the guitar sing and expressing you because yeah. nobody can sound like you better than you. So it's about bringing that out of you. Yeah, well, you've done that. I mean, that's what caught my eye. Uh, I think it was the second trip as a, as a tourist that I, that I made uh, to Nashville. And, and the second time I went alone, so I got to, I got to take in really what I wanted. Um, and uh, I saw you, it was kind of like a punk country kind of a band thing. The, 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 uh, that was a Travis Mann band. Yeah, yeah, he was a little out there. But... Um, but your style was just like really was ear twisting. And then, of course, you know, you posted a lot now, 10 years later, you got, you're always posting on Facebook from those gigs. But you're, I don't want to use this phrase that everybody says, but you kind of play outside sort of thing. Like you're not, when you listen to you play, it's not the standard chicken picking licks that everybody must learn. You've kind of, you've taken that to another level and it's just, so musical and so interesting, you know, so, you know, to, to be able to delve into that and get a little bit of ideas on how you think 
it's uh, it's really good. Yeah. That's great. You know, I mean, the, the thing is, is let's face it. There's a lot of people that just kind of want to sound like somebody else. And, and there's but nothing also, wrong with that either. But they don't do it for a living. You know, yeah. I mean, think about, you know, your normal job where you make money at it. We're in this industry to set yourself apart is to be different. And by me being different, I'm just a weirdo to begin with my personality <laughs> and, you know, just the way that I think. And so I'm applying that and putting kind of my stamp and my my personality into my music it takes a while and 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 you know you can do a lot of different things and run through a lot of i mean i've played for a long time so it's just this constant process my my saying my mission statement is you either evolve or you dissolve there's no room for complacency you're always shedding skin you're always shedding wood shedding or you're either getting better or you're getting worse you're literally yeah. never staying the same and if you have that mindset yeah. And, you know, you're constantly tweaking with stuff. Um, good things typically come. It just takes, it, it, it's, you, you got to put in the work, though. Yeah, <laughs> well said. Let's, uh, let's just jump back and uh, get to know you a little bit. So like you said, and like probably most of your colleagues, they weren't born in Nashville. They kind of got there somehow. So uh, you grew up in, uh, in Wisconsin and you started playing guitar in churches. So why don't you just... Give us a little how, how you got started and when you started picking up the guitar and why you chose it. Well, it was my dad asked me, you know, hey, do you want to get I was nine. I'm 44 okay. right now. So we're talking 35 years yeah. plus ago uh, said, hey, for Christmas, I'm thinking about getting you a guitar because when there was a guitar in the room and like when they were watching like um, different TV shows, I'd be able to pick out the melody, but I couldn't do anything other than that. And I'd probably just, you know, like you type, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. You know, I'd probably just play one finger. And he's like, you, you might want to try guitar. Keep in mind, uh, that's when the album 1984 came out by Van yeah. Halen, yeah. which blew my mind. All my friends, I literally had that mock Eddie Van Halen guitar. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I'll try. And my dad did it with me. Oh, cool. um, uh, so we had separate lessons. We had a, uh, a place, a local place, which was a diamond in the rough, which I still have a relationship with. It's called Paradise Guitars. So hand map, Wisconsin, like we're like southern, southern dead center, like 50 okay. miles south of Madison. And, and it's a smallish town, but luckily we had a local music store. And, you know, that definitely kind of fanned the flames and i went through all the books i started out with mel bay and anybody that starts out with mel bay knows that that's hard as heck you know yeah, it's yeah. not easy stuff so i went through all that stuff and they're like they did they dangled the carrot they're like oh you want to play eddie van halen mel book three mel bay book three now you got to go to four. Oh, you want to um you want to play eddie van halen um you're going to also play in church and i had a lovely lady named peg <laughs> nelson who is deceased now she was she was pretty hardcore. She was she was an amazing person. She held uh, she did a lot of guitar based stuff. So guitar orchestras and keep in mind, hand wrote this stuff out for fifty plus musicians. Taught banjo, taught lap steel, taught uh, pedal steel, taught a lot of the country kind of stuff. And be, this was prior to me even caring about country. So, anyways, they facilitated uh, learning. I passed through all the little different hoops that you got to jump through and finally was playing the rock and roll and stuff like that. Well, now let, let's fast forward playing in church. So I'm used to being in front of people. I spoke in church as well. I, have, oh, wow. I, I could speak in front of any amount of people and never be scared. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of nerves, but I don't like just clench up. And that was a huge thing as well, is that taught me just to be comfortable with myself in front of people. It's one thing to be staring that way. It's another thing when you're staring out and there's a whole church full of people listening to what you say. Better not stumble. Don't mess up the Bible, you know, the, the readings and stuff like that. Don't mess up your chord. You're, you're, you have one part and you're the only guitar player playing it. So, you know, it just taught me a lot of different things. Fast forward into high school, well, of course, the, the hard rock bug took me sure. over, but I still had, you know, a solid background, you know, yeah. fundamentals, if you will, just like the book that we were talking about. So I went through that and I'm like, well, I want to do this 
the rest of my life. I knew that at 13. I knew that at 13. Keep in mind, uh, Crossroads with Steve Vai came out. And then so you got the blues and the rock. And I'm like, yeah. dude, my mind is blown. I want to do this forever. I don't want to do a real job. And I also watched my parents kind of work the regular uh, type of jobs. And towards the end of their careers, they weren't really treated that great, you know. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of like, well, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, like, and I'm hard headed and I'm stubborn enough, you know, maybe if I put enough time. So anyways, I'm in high school and, um, basically I'm like, well, if I want to do this, I better get a education, you know? (laughs) Um, and, uh, so I wound up going to school and, you know, studied classical there, fell in love with jazz, um, the more academic chamber type of music, if you will. Um, fast forward after that, um, wound up, you know, after a stint in Chicago, wound up teaching at that same place called Paradise Guitars. Um, and that the guy who owned the place at that time, it, it switched hands to a guy named Mike Johnston, who um, I would definitely consider a friend and a mentor. Uh, he taught me just a lot about stuff. I always respected him um, and, and kind of taught there for a while. He's like, hey, man, I, I, I'm kind of I got to back off these these country gigs I'm doing. I'm like country. I don't know anything about it. So you weren't into country music at all through at all. university? At, at all. But the one thing was, is my dad always would play Willie and Waylon in okay. Alabama. Oh. And, you know, like I stumbled upon like a Mamas and Papas tape at that yeah, point. Yeah. And I loved that stuff. That was Tommy Tedesco playing a lot of those yeah, yeah, lines. For sure. You know, come to find out 20 years later. Right, right. So I fell in love with good music. And, and the other thing is, is music with a melody, real music, singing music, um, yeah. you know, and, and it was kind of like, you know, I just so you, you bounce around through all these different things, all these great players and all these different genres. And so anyways, he's like, hey, dude, you know, you, you want a gig playing out? I'm kind of I'm working this store and I'm just, you know, and it's a country yeah. gig. So you're going to have to learn. I'm like, I don't know. I started <laughs> playing country with no pick. So I bought a Telecaster, not this one. It was, you know, some Fender thing sure. and started gigging out. And like wow. anything, if you want to get into it, you put the time into it. So yeah. I did that for about three years. And then I'm like, took one trip down to Nashville. I'm like, this is it. So who did you see on your first trip down there that just blew your mind? Don Kelly band. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, just like who most was playing people. with him at the time. I think it was Porter. It might have been Porter okay. McClister. Um, yeah. uh, it might have been somebody else. Uh, I, I I remember it was a, it wasn't Johnny Highland. I know that, and it wasn't Red Volkart. But was you know, trap? Um, I think trap. Was uh, after. I don't think it was Guthrie. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but I came back, uh, and I was just like, I really hooked. felt felt the itch, and so. Yeah. I sold a bunch of different stuff. I worked, I saved for a year and a half and I moved down here and that was 14 years ago. So wow. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, put the time into, did some local gigs, um, really just tried to and let it get into my soul. Cause I'm like, you know, the one thing with country and Western and what I like about country is it, I felt like it was music I could get old with. Yeah. 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 You know, it was, it's something that I could play for the rest of my life. You know, it's like I golf as well. And that's a game that you can play till the day you probably drop unless you have back and hip problems, you know, but uh, it's just kind of like I really fell in love with it and really, you know, I haven't stopped, you know. Since it's, it's so been, true I, that that what you just said, because that's what I always think, too. I mean, you got the, the new pop country that's got a lot of image attached to it, but you've got that um, what you know, what started off as new country, kind of the late 80s. And, you know, it's okay to be a little overweight, maybe short, losing your hair and all that. And, you know, you can still pack an arena, you know, like it still, it works in country. But when you take like hard rock, like, you know, uh, no, not to start a big debate here, but if Vince, Vince you know, Neil wouldn't be what he is, yeah, if like Vince it doesn't Neil look body, right. It was back in the eighties. It's yeah. just you no, know, and I was a big fan of Motley Crue, which yeah. they all live in Nashville, by the way, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's just like you know, um, yeah, I agree with you. You know, you know what you know what the saying is is you know what was around before Pro Tools, pros, <laughs> <laughs> because you know if you sucked, you sucked, and if yeah, you yeah. weren't the greatest looking. You know, look at mom. Speaking of mamas and papas, look at yeah. Mama Cass. I yeah. mean, look at that beautiful voice. But yeah, she may not be the greatest to look at. But you know what? This isn't a beauty show. Yeah, yeah. it's sound. It's audio. Meatloaf, another guy. Come on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sex appeal to that. I mean, the guy's name is Meatloaf for crying out loud. <laughs> he, he got away with it, you know. And luckily, I grew up in that era. And yeah. guess what? 
my thoughts haven't changed about that. Like you said, it's it's a lot of image based stuff. They can polish stuff as much as they want. They can market the shit, the crap out of it. Excuse my language, and it just kind of like it's just different. I, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to go down that road of you know. I was just hanging on to that phrase that you said. It, it's a style of music, especially the more you know, even traditional or the stuff in the. You know, up until like early two thousands, really, it's kind of music you can grow old with. You know, that I like that the, the way you yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah, and I and I just figured I'm like, why not? Let's do it. And I gave up everything. I came down with a little bit of money. I had about six yeah. months saved, and um, I, I quit a great job that I loved. I loved. I had a bunch of students. I was gigging out on the weekend. I had yeah. plenty of money for a small town because you don't really need a ton. I was happy. And 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 I literally rocked my world by coming down here. And it took about three or four months. You start out, it's just like anything, you know. Um, I did get opportunities. Um, people did allow that, but nobody just gave me the escalator to the top. I'm more yeah. of a journeyman. I'm climbing the mountain in hiking boots and with a backpack. I don't have an escalator. And I <laughs> and that's that's how I think about things. All so the did time. you have some contacts before you made the move, or you just got down couple, here? And- I made a couple. I yeah. made a couple, but it's it's like it's the old adage: "Be seen, be heard." Yeah. And you can't be heard if you're not being seen because you're not yeah. playing. You're just yeah, hanging yeah. out. You're networking, and so I started out that way. And then you know the gigs start coming, and they're like, "Oh, okay, yeah. well you can play. Can you learn all this stuff too by tomorrow? Like these thirty <laughs> yeah. songs? Like sure, you know, do whatever you need to do. I've got books and books and books of charts and." But you, you know, were obviously uh, pretty confident you were at the level. You, I knew I could. I knew I, I knew I could hang. You know, yeah, cool. but but keep in mind, you know, there were some unbelievable players. Oh, I came sure. a little bit late, yeah. uh, to be honest with you. If I would have came like directly out of college, I may be. I may have just been a you know a guitar tech or something because the yeah. just the amount of playing was just so incredible. And and you know, you're talking like the heyday of Brent Mason and and all that stuff and yeah, all yeah. those great players, all those great yeah. '90 session players, and. um you know, I came in a little bit late. Uh, I think it's circa 2000, like six or I don't know. I've been here 14 and a half yeah, years, yeah. So whatever that is, you know, whatever 21. Yeah. Like something so like we, that. We mentioned the, the famous Don Kelly band, which, which he retired, uh, about a year yeah, ago. during COVID. I didn't even get yeah. a chance to say goodbye, but I got yeah. a chance to, to sub for him a couple of times, which was but a for those problem. that don't know. And I think most most people have heard of it by now, even if you haven't been to Nashville. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it was kind of a traditional country honky-tonk band, but his thing that was so known was that he had the best guitar players ever cross through his band, That and a lot of them gone on to have, you know, pretty big careers. You know, like, I'll, yeah. I'll drop the, the names, you know, Brent Mason, Red Volker, Johnny Highland, uh, Danny, Daniel Donato, Guthrie Trapp, and... J.D. Simo and yeah. uh, Luke McQuery, I think was the, was the, was the yeah, last was one. The last, the last one, yeah. And he's he's still playing, uh, still playing at Roberts now. I yeah, he's playing with he's Joe like, Fick and Joe Fick's yeah. first game. Yeah, now. Joe, he, he was, was a Travis yeah. Man fan. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. you're that's right. The I recall that's that. Who, that's yeah. who brought him down. I played literally the first gig that he played here because he was a huge, big deal. Joe was in Memphis. He's a stand-up bass player for those who don't know. And uh, stand-up, one of the best in the world. Yeah. Um, entertaining you know, as hell too. Entertaining as heck. Great guy. Um, you know, so uh, you know, like you know, it's this that couple of degrees of separation kind of thing. But you can't be you can't be in the game if you're not in the right town. And that's right, why right. moving here was important and yeah. important to me. And I, I, you know, in the beginning, I literally, I was dropping business cards every every week. I'd go see Travis, and that was with Guthrie playing with them or Porter. Oh, okay, okay. So um, I'm like, dude, I want to play on your gig, dude. I want to play on your gig. And finally, you know, that I that guess they both subbed out, and he's like, well, I got to call this <laughs> schmuck that I don't even know. So he gave me an opportunity, and it worked out. And we we played for several years, toured around, and did a bunch of different stuff. And the cool thing was. Is we played uh, uh, after Don on okay. Wednesday, yeah. so you know I developed a little bit of relationship with with Don, and then I subbed in a couple of gigs with that, you know. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
So anyways, you know, like that's that was my connection to Roberts and that's been going for 12 years. And I literally played there yesterday for lunch hour, lounge yeah. hour with a different act. So, I mean, you know, it's just kind of like the one thing is, is, you know, if um, I guess if you want to get into acting, you you go to New York or L.A. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's you know? what I mean, here a lot. Yeah. You got to You got to do that. And then. You know, if you wanted to be in movies, you know, you're knocking at the doors of Paramount or Fox yeah. or whatever, whatever it is, you know, like you got to be in the city to to to, to play the game. So were and you then pretty it, nervous that first gig that you had uh, with Don? That must have been a little. Yeah. Bit yeah. I mean, it was like it was like a Christmas night gig or something like yeah. that. Um, yeah. I mean, it was with I think on that one, it might have been Jerry Rowe, who's a big session player in town now. And then um, I believe. Uh, on fiddle, it was Josh Headley, who's another big. He's oh, okay. signed with Jack White's label and all that now. So I mean, like, that's that's what I moved down here for. So it's just yeah. kind of like, yeah, you can be a little bit nervous, but use that anxiety. Yeah. And just like I was talking about church, it's like I'm used to being in front of people. You worked really hard to do this. Now go do it. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Well, I guess you don't you have. You knew a, the. You knew the repertoire. I mean, he, he kind of. He's kept it the same for. A yeah, long but I also. Time. I also don't go. I don't. I, I. You know, the one thing about me and why I sound like me is I don't cop other. Yeah. I, I went through that phase of like, all right, here's Brent Mason, like one, here's yeah. Brent Mason, like two. Like I, I, I went through that, and then you know, a lot of what I wind up doing is, uh, especially at Roberts, and why I like to play the older stuff. If we're getting into kind of more of a playing thing, is listen to the melody, yeah, you know, yeah. listen to the phrasing of the melody and the note selection, and then mess with it. And that's why you were able to develop your own, is because you did spend the time learning all these other masters and and building up that inventory of, of knowledge and then you just kind of made it your own but i, I think yeah. it's probably it probably is important to there's a there's definitely a process and, yeah. and you got to put in the time you know it's yeah. like you know it, it just it, there's really unless you're born with it which i don't yeah. i wasn't if you heard my dad or my mom sing or play you'd be like wow matt you've come really far <laughs> they, <laughs> they both always say they played the radio that was, that was, my brother doesn't play nobody in my family is really much of musicians it was just something that i took to because it was a great form of escapism yeah. for me you know I, so how'd I just, you get hooked up with uh, shooter jennings which is waylon jennings son yeah um that was facilitated by john hensley who has who was deceased <laughs> um he was his manager and he would come into travis's gigs and they were buddies and he's like matt i got something for you and i'm like oh what? cool and he was like well I'm going to tell you about it. So he eventually he did. And so eventually everything kind of worked out. I was the band leader. I put the band together. It was a lot of really good, good players. Um, uh, Johnny Stanton, who's in the steel woods, um, uh, Easton Corbin's now a uh, steel player, Jamie Lennon, um, you know, Billy Contreras was in the original uh, one, Scotty Schultz uh, on drums. He's a producer in town now. So anyways, like I wound up doing that and our first gig was the Opry. Oh, Our first wow. gig was the I was going to ask you about that. I didn't know that was yeah, the first one. I have the poster right here. So we, we're in between uh, uh, Jamie Johnson in Alabama. No oh, pressure. Oh, shit. You have video on that? First gig. Uh, the, I don't think, I don't know if they were recording, like, you know, I had family there. They, yeah. there might be, there's some photos and whatnot, but that was our first gig. And then he's like, oh, by the way, my mom's showing up. And oh, by the <laughs> way, this big time producer, because keep in mind, Let's talk a little bit about the Nashville sound and who brought Dave Cobb, who has made yeah, yeah, yeah. Sturgill Simpson. I've met Sturgill. I, I don't know him personally very well, but I mean, all the connection from Shooter now yeah, is yeah. Dave Cobb, who was an L.A. guy with yeah. Shooter, and now he, he went to Nashville. Uh, Sturgill Simpson, Chris Stapleton, who we did gigs with, yeah. and like he yeah, opened yeah, up yeah, for us a couple yeah, of times, and it was just like... This guy is great. So there was a big connection with that. That's awesome. Did about a year and a half, did a live record with both him and his uh, lovely mom, Jesse Coulter. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. so, and I was out, out of the first three records on his new black country rock uh, um, label, I was the on the first two. Oh, wow. Uh, the third one was his, one of his dad's, like a re release stuff. Yeah, so yeah, to yeah. be in that, you know. I 
understand a lot of people like kind of play the outlaw card. Like, dude, I was at, at ground zero for outlaw. You know, yeah. so I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really tout it. I don't really, it's, it's not anything I'm going to like sit here and brag about, but I was, I, I, I've been there and he's a great guy. He was great to work for. He oh, just great. had some other stuff. Now he's doing a bunch of different stuff. He's got that. He's got a radio program. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he would do that in the back of the bus or in his hotel room, really? you know, while we were hanging out. Yeah. He, he, he's into some really cool, great stuff. He's a very well read and closing on that. I, I was going through a cookbook. I think it was at an Ernest Tubbs record shop. It was like a Waylon Jennings cookbook. Well, lo and behold, there's a picture of little baby shooter in there, and you know who his godfather is? Yeah. Muhammad Ali. Oh, jeez. <laughs> who was at his baptism? That was that's who his dad chose. So I mean, like to just to kind of be in that kind of circle was that's cool. It was really cool, you know. And I did it for a couple of years, like I said, a year and a half, two years. Um. So how far did the touring take you? Did you were you out of North? Oh, America? we went all the way to Europe. We did uh, oh. we did the European vacation tour, and I actually have that poster. So we did Zurich. Uh, two dates in Germany, Saragossa, Spain. Well, that that city was founded by Caesar, by the yeah. way. Like, literally, like date zero. Wow. Uh, Madrid and, and Bilbao. So, ah, what um, yeah, I mean, we we went that and did most of the lower forty eight. You know, so I got a yeah. chance to see the country a lot. Did the Toby Keith tour. We played a lot on Texas stages. So Excellent. it was a great experience. So did that lead? Because I've read in in your bio. Uh, you also did some side work for a lot of other kind of country legends, uh, Daryl Worley and uh, David Lee Murphy and Randy Hauser. Did that did that yep. come after? That that was uh, while I was touring with a guy named Ray Scott. I also played with oh, Doug okay. Stone as well. So oh, wow. you know, you know, just kind of covering covering yeah. the gamut. Just, Great song. You know, just to correct something you said earlier, you're not a nobody. You know. Well, you know what you know what I, you know what I know that I am though, and this is great is is um to know kind of what role you play in a band. Yeah. You no, know, I'm I'm more the Keith Richards type. I'm never going to try to be Mick Jagger. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, is I'm great. I'm a, I'm supposed to be a solid number two. You yeah, know, yeah, a yeah. solid guy that's backing you up that you know is going to hit the right chords. You know, that's going to do a little bit of entertaining. But I'm more of a I'm more of a what, what's happening between here. Yeah. I always approach it like. What if somebody was like, what if somebody was blind in the audience? Like the things that you hear, like I, I always sure. think about like, like sound is always number one, you know, yeah. and, I, and I try to For keep sure. myself looking halfway decent and, you know, all that. But I'm not a big showboater. I think it's I think it's a little bit gimmicky and it takes away from what's going on here. I've I've always been about that. That's just who I am. Oh, yeah. You know, I would say that about you for sure. Like you, you music is playing and, and the quality of the playing is is definitely way at the top number one one for you yeah uh, you I just know, take it really seriously and sometimes and, maybe i mean there's nothing wrong with other players too that kind of spread it out and try to create some sort of an image and give kind of a show or something like that but you know you're you're straight down like you're you seem more happy with the going and experimenting in a traditional song framework and, and building on that. And you seem, from what I can tell, really enjoying it. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I feel like the entertainment value should be in the music first and foremost. Yeah. Yes, you're watching it, but MTV has just destroyed generation after generation to listen with their eyes. With your eyes, yeah, yeah. And I think it's stupid. I, I, yeah. I honestly do. I think, you know, it devalues the good musicianship. Yeah. Well, and, there's a lot and, of things devaluing musicians. Yeah, well, let's not go down that road. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to. Cut that's a different negative. Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, that's that. We can save that for a different one. But so yeah, a few I mean, years my, back, um, I picked it up. Uh, yeah, I got a physical copy, and then I also got it on uh, my phone, downloaded it. But you did an EP uh, a few years back, which is really interesting. Musical tattoos. And it's it's kind of all over the place. You got some kind of rocking kind of stuff, some real kind of country stuff, and then you got like this Star Wars thing. Like, uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about that because that was pretty cool. I think that was 2017, um, uh, and I met a really cool guy from LA at the time who does a lot of composing for TV and film. Okay, uh, his name, that's name's Doug. His name's Doug, and um, and uh, he. He helped me out with that a lot and kind of helped help me facilitate that. And so if you're going to do an EP, okay, and you get like five songs, are you going to do five of the same? Are you going to do five train beats? Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I know everything's different on that one. All five are different. Well, that's why I had to yeah. do it, you know. Yeah. And if I were to do a 10 song thing, I might even branch out more. It was the idea to just kind of show you this is what I can do with a telly. Yeah, First yeah. song's telly. Second song's Les Paul mostly. Uh, third song is a song, singer songwriter called Get This in This Guitar Town. Yeah. Um, so the first two are originals too. And I thought that was important too, because I, I hear a lot of great guitar players and it's like, they're, they're playing covers. I'm like, that's great. Um, you didn't write that melody though. And it's cool <laughs> that you can play around it. You know, that's yeah, what yeah. I do all the time at Roberts. And I'm right. not downtrodding anybody that does that because in itself, it's a, it's an artwork. Look at Chet Atkins. He didn't yeah, write sure. a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, uh, a lot of people uh, don't a, a lot, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but but I kind of wanted to come out swinging with my own fists, sure. so to speak. So I did that. Um, you know, had some I, I had some killer players on it, and then I did like I think a version of Misery and Gin on nylon because I studied that at school. I wanted yeah. to throw it all in the pot and yeah, just yeah, stir yeah. it up a little bit. And then the last one, of course, is kind of a jazz kind of thing of John Williams, who I also paid the rights to do and then also have my own arrangement recognized with bmi and ascap of okay. that and i think right. it's been used on a couple of couple of tv spots or whatever like that i know i've gotten my jerry seinfeld 12 cent checks from that <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah that was an awesome experience it was really fun i think it was released in 2017 yeah that um, sounds like a lot of work that tune dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so yeah. many things. It, it, it was, I don't even want to try to like do any of this stuff. And the solo was really weird because I took <laughs> like crazy. this Schofield type of thing yeah. and then tried to just mold it around. And like the players were so good, they could kind of improv. It's got Brad Albin on it from the Time Jumpers, if you know who that oh, is. Okay. Mitch Riley, who's an incredible saxophone player, he did all the saxophone parts. Oh, wow. um, yeah, it, yeah was, it's, it was it's pretty it's pretty incredible that too. Yeah, I mean it's I got lucky, you know, and and I think that's another key thing is why I moved down to Nashville is if you want to get if you want to get great, you know, um surround yourself with greatness. Oh, yeah. Surround yourself with winners, you know, yeah. and that's kind of the thing that I you know, you, you can it when you're doing your own stuff, you can do that a lot. When you're uh, you know, uh, part part of a team that's put together, it's it's a little bit different. You're yeah, not if you're hired help, you can't, uh, you can't. Not that I'm a control freak. I'm just saying, you know, like yeah, you yeah. you want you want to uh, you want to do that. And I've got and and so what I've done is kind of changed gears since then because you know we we don't have CDs anymore. So yeah. now everything's streaming and it's got to be this and that and the other thing. So I've been posting to YouTube. I've released like four or five or six original tunes with video now because basically yeah. if you didn't video it, it yeah, never yeah, happened yeah. That, nowadays. That's the problem, yeah. Nobody hears it. So if, now you got to become a videographer on top yeah. of your own digital yeah. marketer slash yeah. composer slash, <laughs> you know, schedule maker. There's like 14 it's different apps. Work, so dude. you just you just do what you do. You do yeah, the best yeah. you can. I mean, before yeah. we did this, this Zoom meeting, which I've never used before, for. I'm like scrambling and cussing and swearing because like it, it just you got to constantly evolve or you dissolve. Wow. Yes, huh. yes, yes, so yes. yeah, um, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff is great. Plus it's challenging. The latest one that I did was with Chuck Ward, who's a great guitar player called Twin Tellies. And like oh, when I, I was writing that, yeah. the parts to that, it's just like, yeah, that, that, that one. And that was more of a homespun kind of thing. Keep in mind last year set us back as far as sure. a studio musician quite a bit here in Nashville. Yeah. But everybody down there has got home studios. And yeah, true. But, but also, you know, like last year, uh, being in the same room with people without a mask, yeah. um, yeah. I wasn't going to release that. So I did a yeah. lot of stuff with where we all did stuff from our homes. We never interacted, never could see people that takes right. away a lot of things and you got to use, yeah. you got to use, um, it's just different, you know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. not gonna. I like the connection between musicians and being in the same room. Maybe even uh, being literally in the same room, not an ISO room. I did a uh, a funk tune that I wrote called Minor Incident, which was really fun. Um, uh, uh, released it just last year, I think. But um, yeah, I try to do like two or three projects a year and Excellent. just release them like singles. That's it. Excellent. You know, like I can't do, I don't have the money to kind of put together a record. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of fans, like just like, like all the, some of the stuff that you've helped me out with. I've got some fans that, that helped me out to be able to like be able to kind of do this. And I feel lucky enough just to be able to do it. Cause yeah. you're talking about for a standard to pay. And I always pay my musicians um, and videographers and all that stuff. Um, so, I mean, when you wind up doing it, you figure uh, on the low end, 12, Hundred to sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars per tune for, for a song, yeah. yeah, for one song, 
yeah. you know, and then you just do the best that you can. If you want it done professionally, yes, I have a home studio, but I'm just, I, I that's a hat I just don't really yeah. like to wear yeah, yeah. because I just want to concentrate on the music and kind of the big picture, sit back and kind of like take it all in. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I try to do a lot of original stuff. Yeah. I try to like show my voice and, and even when you do the, when you check out the, if you check out, it's Matthew Lee guitar.com is where everything is. Okay. So I've got literally the, the record for free. Yeah. I saw um, your, your website's got everything. It's, it's well. Yeah. Made. Yeah. I've got videos from my YouTube yeah. channel. You, you can go to my YouTube channel. I am also on, I think it's Matthew Lee guitar on instagram yeah. and facebook is kind of dying out so because they keep changing <laughs> damn algorithms so yeah, i yeah. wind up more or less posting snippets to my social media yeah. and more full-length stuff which includes some like t tidbits of lessons from like my true fire stuff like yeah, free yeah. stuff because yeah. you know you know people people kind of like that yeah. word and no, i like, think that's where the business is going for for guys like you uh, you know, it's constantly putting out quality stuff. I mean, you got to be mindful of budgets. Uh, but the goal isn't that those quality projects are going to really create revenue. It's just driving people's attention to your name in which you have other products, you know, which is, of course, in the hope that, yeah. Yeah. Or you're going to get hired to go on this tour because people saw you because of the stuff you're putting out. You know, I think that's the, the mind frame you got to kind of have because, you know, doing some good recordings and throwing it up on a streaming service. I mean, it's not like you're going to get a payback, you know, no, but the payback's got to come in a different way, you know? Yeah. You know, I think it's just kind of like, think of it as like a four minute commercial for yourself. Exactly. Like, that's exactly you you're promoting yourself. Back. You know, you have Which, to like be putting that stuff out there quite a bit. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of full, complete thoughts, you know, yeah. like, uh, these bedroom guitar players that oh here's a little lick and it's a noodle oh ten thousand views like wow yeah. I worked my ass off for four months writing a tune for four yeah. minutes with great musicians and spent two grand on this thing and uh, <laughs> four hundred views awesome <laughs> wonderful just great I know, you know? I know. I mean, these it's kids are getting insane. to the point where they're sitting on their bed and their mom's cooking them food and their damn names <laughs> behind them uh, oh yeah twenty five thousand views. <laughs> It just, I, I can't really keep up with it. And, and or, it's, or if you're like gymnastic ability and you can play the guitar with your leg around your neck or something like that, then you're into yeah, the moon view. Here so. we go again. <laughs> Give me key stuff, man. I'm just not about it. And hey, you mentioned TV. You mentioned something about TV, and it's um, it's kind of cool. The uh, ZZ Top documentary that came out a few years ago. There's a uh, you got a you got a little three second cameo in that. Uh, the Leonard Skinner one. Oh, is it? Yeah, right. Leonard Skinner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah my buddy cool. just literally, he literally texted me. He put it up on his inst his Instagram story the other day. It was ten minutes in. I'm watching this. And Matt Lee's on the damn screen. Yeah, there, yeah. The, the camera. Goes they approached us. Um, they approached us for a documentary of bands all around the country at different venues playing Leonard Skinner songs, and yeah. apparently it's on Netflix. So the Leonard yeah, Skinner yeah, documentary. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, "Hey, I was playing with someone at Roberts at that point, and." Okay, like, hey, we're going to do this really obscure song, something different, um, and uh, go ahead and do it, and they're going to shoot it. So yeah, I guess I was on that. I haven't checked it out yet. I also you haven't seen it. It's been out for a few years, that documentary. Yeah, I know, but yeah. I, I, I I forgot about it. You All know right. what I mean? Uh, I did a th another thing for PBS, which was um, Lest We Forget, which is about people that literally the year prior had passed away. And okay. I did, I did um, Ed Keene. Uh, and oh, I right, yeah, sure. busted out of Strat, you know, played the good old Sweet Home Alabama, which yeah, yeah. actually was a learning lesson for me because, you, oh, Sweet Home Alabama, oh, my God. I've heard no, if you play it right, it's not that if easy. If you play it right, yeah. it's got a lot more different things in it yeah, than yeah, what yeah. you'd expect. Yeah, and all 100%. I can say is it, it gave me a, a huge, um, a, a more of an appreciation, especially for when you really dig into what Skinner went through as a band and oh, like yeah, how yeah, they yeah. crafted speaking of like being original and having their, yeah, you know, yeah. one of the greatest Southern rock bands of all time. And yeah, I played, no, if you're going to have a cameo or something, that's a great band to have one on. I mean, especially as a guitar player. I mean, you know, it was a three guitar band and they really worked on three different guitar parts. Like, it, you yeah. know, uh, it, it was their stuff was cool, you know, and that's why yeah. it lasted so long. So you're wearing a T-shirt, uh, the Nashville guitar community. So, uh, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about that. You started that, and over the years, I mean, I know you got a COVID kind of probably lost uh, lost some time on that, but you've been putting together these shows where you've got, like, 
you know, one monster player after another. I think Mason, Brent Mason headlined one of them a few years ago. Oh, yeah. So what's, what do you got plans on that? And tell us a little bit about that community. That poster literally right behind me. Oh, cool. Tribute to Twain. So what we kind of did is, is, is I came up with this idea because they were getting together at Crackerville. I said, it's great to talk about gear and all the other stuff and hang out over, you know, some uh, mediocre stuff. Is that southern. the one near the Opry, the Crackle Barrel? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and so <laughs> it was an idea that I pitched to uh, um, John Stazella and um, Paul Johnson, who kind of like the three of us uh, um, uh, kind of came up with a couple of different things. Liz Lawrence in the beginning was kind of a part of it. I think she helped get this logo. So, um, but it was kind of like, why don't we do something different, you know? You know, here we are backing up different artists. We're always playing out. We're always playing for someone else. And we don't really get a chance to do this a lot. Why don't we play our stuff the way we would like to do it? You can do an arrangement of something or do originals. And that's how it started. And they're like, huh. And then I'm like, you know what we could do? We could tie in all the different gear that we use and, you know, kind of like wrap that into it. Sure. So long story sure. short, we were able to get, I mean, the names are on the back of this shirt. You can just, it's, it's on the, it's a Facebook group just called Nashville Guitar yeah, Community. Yeah. It's also on my website uh, at MatthewLeeGuitar.com where it's just kind of got, you know, um, kind of br- outlines kind of what's going on. I've got performances of me there uh, doing it and we've done it at different venues. Yeah. Um, some of which aren't even around anymore. Some of yeah. which have deleted the video. So we don't, weren't able to do that. The last one was a little bit weird. And then you had 2020 happen. But I mean, monster players, Andy Wood to the last one, Pat Burgess. Yeah. And, you wow. know, I mean, you're talking just a murderer's row of just great people. And I, I, I'm lucky enough because I kind of came up with the idea. I'm the one that books them. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like we've got one hopefully coming up in November. We're trying to secure venue. And I think I have the players. I oh, don't want to mention any of the players November. now, but it's just kind of like it's highlighting, you know, great guitar playing in Nashville because there's a crap ton of, uh, oh, of yeah. uh, great players. And, you know, I think we're also in 2022. We were talking about doing an all female uh, one, which I've got ideas about as well. And then I would be on the next one, which I'm lobbying uh red volcar to to be at i oh, now cool. that he's in virginia he's closer johnny yeah. highland's there so it's just a matter of kind of like putting the pieces together and making it branching out no different than you going from you know your neck of the woods to now all the way down to nashville interviewing me <laughs> and thank you so much for having me you know we're branching out as well so you know um well, you're it's, not my first Nashville guest because there's so many oh, Canadians God, live down. Hang well, on. so many Canadians I'm live sure. down there. I did uh, David Kelmusky. He's he's a big producer down there. Yeah. Nashville, but he's just from uh, Stratford area here in Ontario. Jason Blaine was another guy who moved down there ten plus years ago. Danik Depel from Emerson Drive moved down there. Yeah. So yeah, quite a few of my guests they're Canadian and they were Southern Ontario. They got their roots up here, but they're down there. Red Volkart's Canadian. Yeah, yeah, but he was from Western Canada. I think he was. Is he uh, from Vancouver area? Yeah, I think. I, I think, think so. Yeah. I. I don't. Really He's know. amazing. You've probably played with him a few times, eh? Yeah, I'd go down uh, in an, at, at Austin and um, um, tour down there. Uh, we were good friends with Dale Watson with one of the bands I played with. You guys would be great home. together because you're both. The, you guess well, well, right? I'm, gonna, I'm writing a tune for us, and and you know, like my, I've been a little bit, little bit busy this summer, but I've already talked to him. He's already said, "Yeah, I'm yeah. in." Um, he's been doing a lot of guitar camps, and that's something that I'm going to be yeah. getting into for 2022. Is yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd kind of like to do that. Um, you know, talking about the whole teaching thing here. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of like now that I have some thing that maybe throws my hat in the ring, so to speak, with that. Yeah, yeah. Join up with, uh, uh, join up with other guys and uh, do like the, the music store tour th- sort of thing. Well, you know, I would say more of like kind of a master class, and I've done yeah. uh, the Guitar Workshop Plus. I mean, Schofield was the guest on that. Gosh, was that cool. Oh, um, yeah. Let's talk about that. I remember you posted that on uh, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something where I was a teacher, and I was actually doing blues there because, believe it or not, there wasn't a ton of country players, at least at that time. Okay. I had been asked to do the 2021 with Brent Mason, and I think Josh Smith, Smith was oh, on wow. it. So I would yeah, be another amazing apparently player. the tier three guy or whatever, however yeah. that works. But um, uh, yeah, I did that, and uh, Schofield was the guest. So he did a master class. He talked about stuff and then played. It was incredible. He's one of my favorite wow. guitar players, even being a country guy. And that's what maybe where sure. some of that stretches out. Is yeah, you've for got, sure. Yeah, you, you, you got, got a, a dog in every town, so to speak. And I just, you know, I, I like country, but, you know, to 
here to do it for like four hours. Sometimes I just, <laughs> I think it's attention deficit disorder or bipolar or whatever it is. You know, like I just, I want to, I want to get uh, uh, some of the different genres that so I really like. Did you like. play with Schofield? Uh, I did not. I just oh, met okay. him. Well, I, just met him. I, I wasn't the jazz instructor. So no, therefore. I know, but I just thought behind the scenes, you might've just uh, picked up we a talk. few guitars. Yeah. We talked. Yeah, we talked oh, for a little that's bit. Cool. That's cool. But but even little stuff like that, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, when when it's when it's a name that's that big, and you know, I've been following him since college. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just kind of like, you know, there there are some there are some names that just like, oh, that's a cool guy. You know, I I like to meet him. And then there's some guys that you yeah. just go, you know, guitar nerd over. And yeah, sure. Like one of yeah. them. And, and and when I met Red, I was kind of that way too. And. Uh, we'll talk about what a just a sweetheart of a guy, you know. The yeah, he guy comes across like, that way. I've, I met him only once. He uh, came funny to as he heck did too. A, he, yeah, he did a Toronto thing way back ten fifty. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was him and, and Brent Mason were up here in Toronto, and it was like I, I heard about it like last minute, and just I gotta go. And uh, yeah, it, it it was uh, so, but it was more just a pitcher handshake sort of thing. But uh, well, they they just did a thing with Johnny Highland on top of it too in Atlanta. Uh, not too long ago, like literally last week or whatever. I mean, I've seen it. So, you know, you know, I mean, like uh, he was great, you know, like he was yeah. really cool to meet. So, I mean, like, you know, and hey, you, we'll guys, be hope, you guys would be good together. Something. You guys well, would I'm good thinking, together. I'm thinking I've already got, you know, an idea and then, you know, we'll do some guitar twins on it and then, you know, back and forth yeah, call and response, yeah. kind of well, like what I fun. did with Chuck, you know, just maybe, maybe a little bit, uh, just different, you know. I don't like releasing the same thing, you know, if back to back. So, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I've got I've got a really cool thing coming up, which actually, um, uh, let me grab it one one more thing here. It's gonna feature this guitar, which is just pretty, just like. Oh wow! So, Look at that. You ever seen one of these? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, so that I'm not trying to sell anything, but like it's so it's okay. Marchione. So Ooh. so you got that. And then, like, check out the body on that. Oh, wow. Look at that angle. So this is a handmade guitar in uh, yeah. Houston, a Marchione guitar. So it's going to feature this. And then also, uh, Josh Martin's got a new uh, company called Tone Speak with speakers. So I'm going to kind of combine the stuff. And it isn't a commercial. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to feature some of these things on these nice companies that kind of just allow me to be able to, you know, play their stuff. This is, this is this is uh worth more than my car and my car <laughs> isn't that bad you know like pushing 20k yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of like to have them just be like hey matt here's this go and do something with it yeah, literally it that's out. what yeah. i'm working on right after we do this zoom call oh, really? so I, i'm lucky enough to kind of do that i'll have those kind of things coming out probably one or two originals with one a collaboration i think uh with lou lou thomas who does the uh country guitar players.com which okay. I also have. Yeah, uh, yeah, you've stuff gotten stuff on there too. Yeah, yeah, like he's he's really grown, and I was the first guy ever to oh, do course. I was the oh. first guy. I also got um, Matthias on there. So, oh, wow. oh, uh, yeah. playing with the Royal Hounds. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's great. And like I said, you know, that's why I moved to Nashville is to kind of be around it. Um, but it's also great to connect with other people. Lou's in the UK. You're in Canada. Yeah. I have friends all the way out, you know, up Houston, Texas, right here, all yeah. the way out in New York. Uh, it's a small world now, man. It, it all, really is. And the, internet, the internet allows us to do that, you know, yeah. and it's it's for as big as it is, it can it can be pretty small. And and I yeah. think the number yeah, one. Yeah, pretty cool. Is, it's pretty cool when you think about it. So on the True Fire, uh, the stuff you did for True Fire, there's a there's a section. I thought maybe you could just share it with guitar players or, or viewers here who's ever watching. Um, you have a bit of a focus on on how to practice. Uh, there's a, a section in the True Fire stuff about practicing. What uh, what tips about practicing could you can you share with us? So basically, I kind of define things in f I, if this is what you're talking about in yeah. five cool. different five different categories i think you get the art the practicing which i can talk about playing performing creating improvisation oh improv is last is it in an yeah. order the way you yeah, said because it? you're creating without a net live yeah yeah, yeah. you know so I, that's how i'd categorize it and each of them have their own kind of set of i wouldn't say guidelines but the way that i approach things um for and also to understand what you're doing so when you sit down it just i know it can be cumbersome because like i've 
go through it as well. You know, it's just kind of like, well, you've got to perform this song tonight, so therefore you need to practice and work on playing it before you perform it. Does right. that make sense? Sure. That's three different levels of understanding a tune. Um, where when I write my own stuff, then you're doing practicing, you're playing to perform your creation. That's four. And then the stuff that I do kind of live, I try to incorporate all of them. And then the improvisation, which, you know, let's face it, you know, you're not improving everything. You're just kind of like, you're kind of making things work to fit into the song that you're playing. You just have to have it at a moment's notice. Right. It's like talking. It's like yeah. you have all these words in your head. Yeah. You can't just spit out anything. It's got to make sense. Yeah. So, um, but, and then the practicing stuff, just, I, I kind of think of it just kind of like, uh, you know, how athletes do it. You know, you just, I just start out with simple exercises, get the okay. blood flowing one, one, two, three, four, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, it sure would be nice to have a pick, you know, this isn't plugged in, but you know, a little stuff like that, get it going, get your head thinking about music. And then it's also great, like a workout, if you think of it like a workout, which it really is for your mind and your, your fingers is just kind of like, um, start to get into have a routine, have something that you're winding up doing. Um, that's why I like creating these projects. I gig out 40 hours a week. I don't have to worry about gigs. I don't have to worry about that. Thank God. You know, um, but just having uh, setting goals and stuff like that, like for my true fire, I've got to like upload this stuff to my channel, which is the Nashville hot Pickin, not to be confused with the book. Um, you know, it's just a play on Nashville hot chicken. Sure, That's sure. all it is folks. Yeah. No, I'll just, <laughs> Call me guilty for it. But, you know, it's just kind of like, um, that's how I'd kind of approach it. Getting stuff like that book, checking out material online. There's a ton of free stuff out there. Um, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, try to facilitate that. I mean, like, you know, I, I would just say set goals and they can be small, but just then move that direction. It's like I said, you evolve or you dissolve that there's no room for complacency. So if you're sitting here in this gray area, like, I don't know what to do. My guitar's in my hand. Just just move one direction. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's kind of the gist of it. And then, you know, as, as you wind up doing it, like that's what I did um, during COVID. You know, a lot of us were just shut down for such a long period of time. I put out a bunch of stuff I never would have had an opportunity to do, like Round sure. Midnight by Thelonious Monk and, you know, uh, wrote a couple uh, tunes, did some Irish music with Mitch from the Cantina Band thing. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we, it's all on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, talking amateur video and <laughs> and um, okay audio because it's not professional it's me yeah. doing it once again yeah. but it's yeah. just kind of like i do the best that i can but it's more about that playing so is there a difference between uh the stuff you did on uh, country guitar players.com true fire and then and then the book um, everything's different yeah absolutely so, everything's different you know if you had to guide somebody let's say yeah, who's kind, of. kind of beginner medium sort of level or somebody who's already fairly pro and you know kind of working um is there one of the courses that you would direct that type of person to well i mean a lot of the stuff the way that i break stuff down is i kind of like once again five categories is kind of like your double stop single note lines open string licks bends and, and things like that na nature so i'll give you the lick but it's kind of the way that you kind of jumble them up to make the musical phrases. So those are the key components. Those are like using just one word or two words. And then as you build your phrase or full thought, um, once again, thinking about it like the English language, you know, you just wind up building a longer uh, stream of things. Um, I, what I try to do is my target market is the beginning of e intermediate playing mm -hmm. up until like the like advanced players. And I always try to break stuff down and try to help with the mental aspect of it. So like knowing, knowing what you're playing is super important. They're not just numbers on the fretboard. I'm sorry. Yeah. They aren't. Yeah. And if you do that, you're never going to learn. 
You have 12 notes. That was the first thing that we talked about. You have 12 notes. Learn them on the neck. I can't tell you how many people that have been playing for 30 years. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to do this and we're playing this note and this note. Well, what note is that? Like, <laughs> if you if, if you have that, and I'm not trying to be a jerk, I'm just saying learn your fretboard. You know, that yeah. that's like, if you can't do that, it, it makes it very difficult to learn. And they aren't numbers. They're sounds. Right. They're sounds that come from your fretboard. Those those numbers are associated with the sound. All the three the different courses I just mentioned, uh, the True Fire, the uh, countryguitarplayers.com, and then your, your latest book, they would all work, like you said, equally well for people just kind of entering in that mid-level of ability. Yeah, and then, and like I said, um, you know, th- that's why I started the book off like that as well, is just kind of like, let's start with the most basic components, yeah. and then let's go from there. It jumps pretty quick into the intermediate and then continues to go. So Yeah, yeah and, and then some quick. of the courses, you know, I'll start off, like like for True Fire stuff, my solo one, like for my mod- like my uh, solo course, is, is quite simple. So I start, normally start from a chronological, like, okay, okay. we're here and we're just going to increase the intensity, if you will. And it's the same kind of thing with uh, the country guitar players. I try not to alienate anybody because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, the idea is to to sell it, but it's also to like bring people in. It's not to exclude yeah. people. Right, the right. idea is like, come on in. It's it's okay. You know, like it's a <laughs> non-judgmental thing. And just kind of like, okay, we're going to do this. And then it's going to get a little bit harder. We're going to add a little bit of this, you know, like, and I think that's the way that I approach it because I don't want to push away, you know, straight up beginners or just, you know, make them be upset. Like, well, I got this and I don't, I don't get any of it. Um, And I want the intermediate players to be like, man, you got me. You really got me on this. Uh, I want more. And then the advanced players to to not be like, yeah whatever that's that's super simple yeah i I already know that so or i want to have something for everyone is basically what i'm getting at and i don't want to alienate anyone yeah no well listen what i saw it's uh it's really laid out really well and i would uh you know i think everybody should check it out i mean you made it dirt cheap and uh even if you don't want to spend the money you can check out all the stuff on his uh on your youtube page uh you got plenty of free stuff (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm actually giving the album away free because you know what? I put it, I've had it up on Spotify for yeah. like the stuff that's really cool. Uh, which you could, you could either just watch it for your enjoyment, or you could make it your own lesson because you, you I don't know what you're using if it's just your phone or a GoPro, but you set it up like really close to your fretboard when you're playing Roberts, and you'll throw out these videos of you just kind of playing to a tune, and the guitar is like you know, much louder because you got your phone right there or your camera, but it's, it's a great lesson. Yeah. You got to keep pumping well, those out. Those are great. I don't, I don't have, I don't have anybody else out, out there in the audience. It's a good, and I tell people, I say, Hey, this is guitar centric. Cause I get some people <laughs> like, Hey, the mix isn't good. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like this is a phone on a Ninja clamp. I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, so you're using your phone. Free. It's really clear. I think it's really good. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I try to play good and, you know, like try to have some accentuations and all no, that. The quali- well, the quality of the video is really good, I find. Not bad, you know. Yeah. It's just an iPhone 11, and yeah, I'm yeah. about ready to upgrade to the 12. I'm not getting the 13. I'm still at because it's just the number. <laughs> I'm still You're at a seven. seven. Hey, at least you still have a home. At least you still have a home button, dude. Wait till you jump to the next <laughs> level, like, and you go to touch it. You're like, you're like, what? It's not there. That, I know. That my would kids, traumatize me. My kids all have the new ones. I'm, <laughs> I got the old one. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> You're going to have to let that home button go, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that, uh, 
Um, it's just a ninja clamp. It's just a ninja clamp. And, and I figure like that's like raw, dude. Like that, yeah, that no, stuff good, is like good. the raw stuff that you're going to get is that Robert stuff. And you know why I also do it? Because the drummers and the band doesn't play like at 130 decibels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Plus, it just allows me to be me the more more so than playing a Luke Bryan song or more the modern country. And that's yeah. kind of what we talked about, not bashing any style of country because, you know, there's a lot of really good players playing on those records and all that stuff. Oh, and, for sure, yeah. And, and they put their time in, they paid their dues, and you got to do what you got, you know, what the boss asks. But when yeah. you do your own stuff yeah. and you kind of can you have a little bit of leeway on some traditional music and just make it your own. I think that's where, and that once again, that's kind of like that level five, you know, um, improv type of great. thing that I talked about. Matt, it's been great hooking up, you know, uh, we're, we're not in person. I haven't been to Nashville in a couple of years now and I really kind of want to go, but with all the restrictions and all that kind of stuff, it's, uh, it'll probably take me a little bit longer, but I'm hoping to get down there and I can see from the videos, Nashville's, pretty well hopping again looks like you guys are busy oh yeah. yeah it is open for business that's cool that's cool i mean we're we're getting there we're getting there but we're hey we're... i see some people at your toronto blue jays games <laughs> okay it's okay to go see people yeah we're I mean, getting there we're getting there yeah so um, there's tons of stuff for free like i said uh check out uh, check out matt lee and I'll, i'm gonna stick in some uh, video clips throughout this interview so you're gonna get a a taste on on how his style is so friggin unique but uh there's lots of good uh lesson stuff that he's given away for free so take advantage of that and then uh you know check out the uh, guitarplayers.com uh check out his true fire stuff and uh, grab this book i mean like you know whatever for american guys oh, it's 20 bucks the price of two happy meals you can yeah. have i mean it's a lot more for months of knowledge Look at look at that ugly mug on the back. Oh there my you god! Go. Yeah, I got, I you got can you can even hear my voice for two and a half hours telling you how to do all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, and it's really simple. And it's not that you're you don't stream it. They give you a code uh, on the site, and then you just you can download all the videos. So you can just and then you, you know you, like obviously you can stop, phrase it, rewind it, and all that. But it's really it's really it's flawless. Like it's it's easy to do. So uh, Matt, like I said, uh, great great hooking up with you. Much success in the, in the teaching career. I mean, how many guitar players do you know that have two university music degrees and then 20 years of gigging experience? I mean, you're going to learn from this guy. <laughs> I hope so. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, well, I, if, you, if you don't, I don't I have know, a money back. Up. I don't have a money back guarantee because it depends on the amount of work that, as we talked about, that That's you put right. into. But I can't thank you enough. I'm really proud of um, you know you because you you've really started this thing off and and you're really you're really doing a good job. You've been doing oh, it for you. you know a year and a half now. We've talked actually about equipment and stuff like that. I appreciate you having me on. Um, I, and also, I just uh, have appreciated um, you, you kind of just you know checking in with me and like you, we're friends, dude. And but we also talk about music. And I just wanted to thank you because I, I'm proud of you for doing you know oh, the podcast. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, and I would say if you want any of this information, I try to all streamline it on MatthewLeeGuitar.com. Yeah, and, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. I've said it a couple of times, but just go check that out. It's got kind of links that like if you want to find my Instagram, or you want to you know Facebook, if you want to go to YouTube, if you want clips, if you want free audio from well, that I, EP that we talked about. One last thing before we say goodbye, since it's in your lap and we didn't even talk about it. Let's talk about the Bill Crook guitar for just a minute because that's oh, okay. friggin' yeah. cool looking. Yeah, this is the water sparkle. Um, and uh, so it's front and back. I got another one coming. So we already hi highlighted like one one up more of the jazz boxes. But so you got the Paisley, water sparkle, top bound, and the Coup de Gras, uh, Peter Florence pickup snowcaster. Yeah, those are he recommended. Away too, so you can't yeah, even last year he did. Again, those yeah. are about, those are well over a. <laughs> They're expensive. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. So I got another one coming. I love this guitar. It's Excellent. kind of my main guitar down, down down downtown. Excuse me, I can't talk. It's also in the video yeah, series. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. But uh. He 
he makes great stuff. I'm literally going to make my final payment for another one. Um, I like a lot of tellies. The tellies that you see and on the other videos all have different personalities. So it's not, it's, it's not to take anything away from them, but yeah, I got, I got one a few I, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, dude, you know, why, why have one when you can have 20, you know, it's just funny, just, just dude, you know, but I, I like playing this thing. I like, you know, to get into, you know, t- you know, stuff. It's just neck profile, which I'm not a Excellent. big fat baseball neck guy i like okay. the medium jumbo frets um i like my st- stuff set up a little bit high to do the chicken picking if you can see this those are about where i keep my nails they're real i get that question a lot i try yeah. to trim them quite a bit they're just put have some extra protein in your diet and normally they they stay pretty good um you know uh, maybe we can do another another one some other time on like yeah. all the like yeah. deep in uh technique yeah, yeah, but yeah. i love That's this guitar I'm, i know most people know me as a telly guy but there's going to be some stuff that is going to be featured there's a strat thing that I've got out there already, but there's going to be some newer stuff that you see. As we talked about the entire video, I really try to branch out and uh, uh, it's it's like pitching in baseball, dude. You know, I may show you the fastball now, but I've got plenty of curveballs or knuckleballs or whatever. Yeah, you, you got know, lots whatever. of curveballs, man. <laughs> Well, I try to do that, you know, and and, and that's what oh, sets me. We'll, we'll save talking about your balls in another video. All yeah, right. yeah, that's the. Uh, but um, you know, we, we uh, it's the only way to you set yourself apart. You know, there's so many great guitar players down here. There's so many great guitar yeah, players yeah. in this world. It's like you got to have your own voice, and that's kind of sure. where hopefully the you know the book, the different stuff that we talked about. Which thank you for letting me just yap on about yeah. all the different stuff I've done. It seems like it's actually kind of been a pretty decent career so far. So excellent. Man. Uh, Till the next time, one day when I'll be yeah, back man. in Nashville, like you know, sit in Roberts. Well, the, the last time I, I sat so. beside your mother, so uh, we'll see who I sit beside the next time. <laughs> well, uh, she's a very kind lady, and you're a kind dude for having me on here. And I, I wish you the best, nothing but the best. And thanks for having me on here. I really right. appreciate it. Take care, man. Take care, man.